10th meeting of Public Works Committee. Uh, I'm joined by uh, Mr. Flynn and Ms. Dorsey. And um, directly to item number two, comments, suggestions, petitions by residents in attendance regarding items not on the agenda. John. Thank you, John O'Brien, uh, Executive Director of the Westchester Business Improvement District. I just wanted to bring the Council's attention that the bid is launching an initiative with the Westchester Green Team to do a pilot program behind the Chestnut Street Garage. Um, we're working on creating a pollinator garden behind there as kind of an effort within our five-year plan to help with alleyway beautification. We figure green, bringing greenways or new greenery into our alleyways is a good way to do that and if we can do it in an environmentally sustainable way by bringing in native plants and pollinators. Um, I'm not, since it is borough property, the bid would be financing all of this. So there wouldn't be any ask of council for funding on this and going forward, we would maintain it. Um, but I just wanted to bring that to council's attention in case there was any need for direct permission since it is borough property. Pat, how large would it be? Uh, so if you look behind along press, it's the Prescott alleyway side of the garage. Um, so it would run the entire, nearly the entire length of the Chestnut Street uh, garage. What the west wall of the garage? The, yeah, the south, yeah, south wall. Yep. Okay. So just wanted to bring that to your attention. Apparently, what Yeah, there used to be a bunch of tulips back there, but they seem to have died off. Um, so I met with Courtney Finner in this morning and uh, Margaret Huggins. Um, so we're, and we have a meeting on Friday, but I just wanted to bring that to council's attention. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. O'Brien, when do you think it'll start? Um, so we have a meeting this Friday with the green team trying to kind of pull the various interests. There's some Westchester University folks that are involved or interested in this kind of initiative. Uh, we're cons the, I don't have the green thumb, so I'm trying to bring in those who are more expertise in gardening. So there has been talk about maybe looking at a September planting, um, but we'll have to want them to examine the bed and see if there's any kind of maybe site prep that we would do this fall and then maybe a April, May uh, planting next year. So just depending on what the experts would tell me is the beneficial time to do that. And then we hope to kind of spread this to other businesses, other properties throughout the borough of not just making a pollinator garden that's its own little island, but you know, working so that the bees have you know, different places they can go throughout the borough. And it also will hopefully liven up our alleyways, improve you know, both the look and hopefully the smell of some of them as well. Gonna have a beehive anywhere? Well, I hope not, but uh, we're also looking at possibly doing like educational placards along on the Chestnut Street Garage um, with that garden. That's more long term to educate folks about the importance of native plants and pollinator gardens and also make this beautiful as a nice touch for folks visiting Westchester because a lot of them park in the Chestnut Street Garage and to see that garage look a more appealing to them. Yeah, if you have a beehive close by, you'll get veggies two weeks before everybody else and flowers three weeks before everybody else and they get stung. There you go. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. John, you might as well stay up here for uh, the next item. Mr. Metric has it. Mr. Metric. I love the idea. I, I like plants. We also are doing a pretty major construction project at Chestnut Street Garage and we have a dumpster in that area. So I'm happy to talk with you guys and, and help you plan so that nothing, nothing's more horrible than doing a lot of great work and then having construction crew come and step all over it and ruin it. So let's let's coordinate our schedule. Yeah, I absolutely appreciate it. Yeah, we're, I mean, right now I'm just trying to get all the interested folks together, get a long-term vision of what they want it to be, but that's, that's an excellent idea and we'll see what, so we can work together on that. Uh, are there any questions or comments from people attending the meeting? Okay. Um, item number three. 
consider approving Westchester Business Improvement District uh, request to apply for a grant to wrap the big belly trash cans. The bid will cover all costs. Attachment to that. So I can summarize real quick, and, and this is very preliminary. I mean, we're making a grant application to the Department of Economic Community Development for Keystone Communities Program grants. Um, so it's a highly competitive grant, so there's not, you know, there's a good chance that we will not be successful, but we wanted to at least make the ask. Um, and then the idea would be that part of our five-year plan that, you know, when we got reauthorized by council, one of the items was working with council to get the rest of the big belly trash cans wrapped in the downtown. You know, for those who walk around, some are, some are not. Um, it makes the town more attractive and it's also been an educational piece on environmental sustainability. Uh, so this grant would help cover part of the cost for that. It's depending on what grant we would end up in, it would either be a 50-50 match or a 70-30 because uh, there's a couple different tranches that they just DCD decides if they're going to move forward with you to stick you into. Um, if we were successful, then we would come back and work with Public Works, work with the PAC on actually implementing that and what time frame that could work. Um, but we did just want to get council's permission to at least move forward with exploring the grant. Um, what would, because I know we've done this sort of thing before, what, what would be on these wraps? Would it be advertising, artwork, no, we would, combination? We would there? seek to keep the current uh, messaging that you see about the importance of recycling, the importance of shopping small. We weren't looking to bring in outside advertisements in them to make them look more artistic, but also have positive public messaging for public education. Um, but we would want to work, you know, on, uh, work with council and public works and the PAC uh, on determining what the, the look of that would be. Uh, but this was just kind of a preliminary ask to be able to submit the application. Uh, in previous ask and council approvals, they typically, council likes to see the artwork prior to anything being approved and going up. Yeah, absolutely. And that's our, absolutely, that's our plan. We just wanted to, you know, get the preliminary okay to move forward with the grant application, see if we're successful and then come back for that secondary conversation on when and what the look would be. Okay, I, I, I like that idea. The nice thing about the belly wraps, the, the graffiti or tagging artists that are around the borough, uh, they actually respect the, the art that's on the big bellies. I have very little uh, removal of any type of uh, graffiti on them. The biggest problem that we do have is that people put stickers on them and they're a little bit more difficult to get off. And to keep the, the big bellies clean, the uh, community service people have been going around two or three times this past summer and scrubbing the big bellies uh, to make sure that they stay fresh and clean so they don't uh, get soiled during the summer. But the uh, the nice thing is that the, the people that, that do uh, vandalism uh, respect the the artwork, which is which is very nice. Crooks, interesting. Ms. Dorsey, so it would be a three zero to move Thank forward you. with that. Thanks, John. Okay, I remember. Authorized Public Works to purchase a new street sweeper at an approximate cost of $260,000 and to repair the 2016 model street sweeper at a cost of approximately $11,000 using the American Rescue Plan funds. You want... Is this better? Okay. Hello, Al Venatelli with the Public Works Department. Um, as you know, for the roughly the past two months, we've had issues with both 
street sweepers. Uh, the one street sweeper, the it's a 2007 model, has been down over two months. Uh, the other one uh, is about seven weeks now that it's been down and we have not been able to sweep the streets in the borough. Uh, so we're, look, we're asking to use the funds provided by the Amer American Rescue Plan Act uh, to purchase a new street sweeper to replace the 2007 sweeper. Roughly the cost is $260,000. And also to repair the 2016 sweeper um, and that cost is about $11,000. Can you explain why we are allowed to use the American Rescue Funds so the residents know why? I'll defer that to Barb. She has more of the details. On it. Yeah, real quick, the, the street sweeper and the cleaning of streets is part of our MS4 permit from DEP, the uh, Clean Streams Act. Um, and those, any, anything to do with keeping our streams clean is something that's allowed by the uh, the federal money that was um, given to us, including the purchase and repair of street sweepers. That just made it very clear for all the residents that are home listening. You know, they're going to wonder why all of a sudden we have $270,000 to, uh, to spend where the last three months I've been telling you, no, you know, we don't have any money. But um, uh, we did the research to make sure that this fits within the, uh, the parameters of the, the act. Any questions, Ms. Dorsey? Uh, well, I'd like to hear Barb Renati's explanation of, you know, how this works and what it's going to cost the borough. You actually look at the different um, sources of funds that you can use this money for. Um, there's four different um, batches that you can use it for. Number one is to respond to public health emergency or its negative impact, negative economic impacts. The number two use for these funds are to provide premium for eligible workers that were affected by COVID-19. Um, the third use is for the provision of government services to the extent of the reduction in revenue from COVID-19. And then number four is to make necessary investments in water, sewer, or broadband infrastructure. And obviously the street sweeper um, provides an important function um, within the stormwater management system. So that's how we feel that's a useful use of this money. This is a grant or? This is, these are monies that we received from the federal government. Okay. Um, it's called the American Rescue Plan Act. Uh, we received the first tranche. We, we're getting this money in two uh, batches. We received the first batch uh, about a month or two ago. We received a little over a million dollars, and then we'll receive another million dollars next year. But there's very specific um, uses that this money can be used for, the, the four uh, main categories that I just went over. Thank you. And this was or was not included in our budget, the million, the American. This was Act. not part of the 2021 okay. budget. No. Okay. Thank you. Barb, can you also explain how, it, but this first batch of money and the second batch we get next year, uh, we have to have it earmarked or spent by what, 2024? That's correct. Yes. So, yeah, that, that, that way there. We can't use it to pay down our debt. We can't use it to, to, to take care of the pension. We can't put it in the general fund. We have extremely specific functions that we could use it for. So that's why it's, it's it will probably be audited based on our usage of the money. Yeah, we are. we will be subject to a single audit for this money, but there is a calculation that can be done um, to recognize the reduction in revenue that we, um, incurred for COVID-19. So that's um, a function that we still have to work on is what that impact will be for the borough, but there are the other uh, sources that we can use this for. Well, before you get off the subject, uh, there's another agenda item uh, running Everhart Park and the issuance of a bid to some play equipment in and do some stormwater management. Uh, 
improvements there along with this new $600,000 park improvement uh, as part of the, the federal uh, money that's come to all municipalities uh, in some of the preamble conversations or words in the, in the documents from the feds they said that uh, improvements to parks, trails and things like that um, because of the pandemic and the additional use that they all got you can use money for park improvements also so we're going to Going to be asking council also to uh, allocate um, two hundred and twenty thousand dollars of that money uh, the Everhart Park project which has been uh, it's now um, bids and is over budget but this is a, another use of that money that we can use well to point out your to your point mr. Perone it does say that uh, we're going to be using it for stormwater management and, and site work correct yeah, okay. Come on up. Solve the issue. Uh, Montgomery Avenue is in West Goshen, and um, it, I'm sorry. I, I think it's both, isn't it? Both sides, West Goshen and Chester. Something about. Yeah, we we've. I'm just uh, wondering if, if some of the money could be allocated that in the other part. Um, yes, it could be. Uh, Montgomery Avenue is all. The whole road is in West Goshen Township. Uh, what we share is we share the water from West Goshen. Once it comes over and under Montgomery Avenue, we, right. we get it. Uh, the borough and West Goshen Township, we have applied for joint grants to start doing improvements to not just there, but the whole watershed of Goose Creek, which goes all the way up to where LA Fitness is. But I don't want to be too blunt, but a million dollars isn't going to be a drop in a bucket to fix that project. But uh, we did some studies, uh, engineering studies, 25 years ago. Um, you know, we need money. That's part of the grant money we're trying to get. We're trying to get the, the money for grants to update those studies to see what projects we can do. Um, need like you know a laundry list of projects over the years to, to kind of cherry pick. And say, okay, we can do this one this year, or this one next year. And, and, and it's going to take years and years to fix Goose Creek to a point where it's not as bad. Um, the flooding, will, I don't think, will ever go away because the, the stream channel is just it's not big enough to handle that. But um, it's a good question, <laughs> and, and we are working on it little by little. So I guess the other question I have about the allocation. Is, is there a extra plan? Where is that it's taking place in that station? Are there any other parks involved? Because I money given to a park for that it's over budget. So, wondering if parks. Chester, because it's hot, asking us to get it. So I guess the question, my question is twofold. Where is this bigger Not a bigger conversation. This is the first time we've even asked council to spend any of it. Okay. Um, the, uh, we're, we're in a little bit of a dilemma with the street sweeper. It's two hundred sixty thousand dollars. I think he asked the question: Was it budgeted? No, it wasn't budgeted. Money received from the, the federal government was not budgeted either. So these are new monies that came in. Good allocation. Um, but but the. The additional money that we have and the the additional million dollars that we should get sometime next year, 
there hasn't been any subcommittees to you know finance committee to uh, take a look at where we should best spend that money. Um, Keith Karowski in his uh, presentation on Everhart Park, he's going to go over some of the some of the money that has been spent at all the parks over the past three four years, so council can get a better understanding of where the money has gone. It all been spent? No, 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 no. There's oh, that, that money has been spent. He's going to go back in history and okay. show council what money has been spent at what parks mm -hmm. over what years. Uh, because you know, you know, every year, uh, typically the friends of the parks, they're you know, they they're advocates for their parks, they're beautiful parks, especially Everhart and Marshall Square. Um, and the other parks, they you know, they kind of um, unfortunately get the crumbs. Uh, so we got to find a way to kind of equal all that out. That's what we're going to try to do. So, so I'm understanding you you're saying to me that the funds that this conversation committee, is that a correct? Uh, that's up to Borough Council. Yeah, but for all. Okay, but the million dollars that we have on hand that's being held separately, that has not all been spent. That's still, the conversation is still being talked about of how it's going to be. 71,000. Street sweeper, right, Street yes. That, that, yeah, we haven't spent a nickel at okay. this point. Any questions? Oh, God. Any questions or comments on that? Dale, come on up. Good evening, Dale McClure, Ward 7, 302 West Marshall Street. Um, can you confirm how long these street sweepers have been down and how long we have not had our streets swept in the... ...mentioned that the uh, 2007 street sweeper has been down for about 10 weeks and the other has been down seven weeks, so it's been seven weeks. That we swept the roads. During that time, have we had any community service people cleaning up around the streets or doing any other activities to assist in that endeavor? Uh, I can tell you that, speaking for the community service division, we don't even have one, but I guess we do now. The uh, they've only been uh, working at the. Uh, uh, Gay Street, Market Street, Corridor, and the Business District, trying to keep the Business District clean. Uh, they've been sweeping the streets with brooms and pulling weeds all summer. Uh, and they've gone to the smaller parks. I, I, I'm just asking about the streets. I, just, yeah, I don't need, yeah, they, I don't no, need a history. They, there's no, no, they don't, they uh, they have not been sweeping the streets other than Gay Street, Market, and, and I say the, the, the five streets in, the, in downtown, in the, in the okay. district, they've been clean. And during this time period, has there been a moratorium on 8 to 11 enforcement? Well, I'll answer that question. No, there has not been because that also frees up the, uh, the public works division to do what they need to do in, in the borough, which they've been very active uh, working through picking up tree limbs, picking up trash. They so they have been doing work along the streets during that time. Yeah, but they can't clean them. Yeah. Yeah. The public works is always is doing something. If you there's two pickup trucks running around, uh, if people trim their their trees, they just throw them in the street these days. And public works has to go around and pick them up. Three limbs. Okay, like as that. long as the you know it's being the eight to eleven is being taken advantage of. Yeah. It has been. Okay. Not to the full extent of cleaning the streets though. Well, that's understandable, yeah. but if, if nothing is being done, then I would, I would question why there wouldn't be a moratorium. Yeah, thank you. Now it works, okay. 
Uh, any other comments or questions on this issue? So we're talking about the uh, street sweeper. We need it. This is for both, right? It's for purchase and repair. Purchase like, and repair. Yes, I approve. Me too. That'd be a three O. Ah. Um, item number six, uh, authorize public works to lease a new Ford F-550 dump, dump body truck to replace the current 2011 model uh, F-550 at an estimated annual cost of $13,656. Uh, the attachment is up on the screen. Mr. Vinatelli. Hello, um, this is to, um, we're requesting to lease a new uh, Ford F-550 dump body truck. Um, we've had the one down for probably about three months now, and it's one of our uh, smaller dump trucks, and it's one of our workhorses. Um, we use those every day, and it's, uh, it's kind of holding us down right now. Uh, and it's also one of our main plow trucks in the winter time. So we're requesting to uh, go ahead and uh, make the lease purchase. This was actually, this attachment was actually in last month's, uh, but that was, uh, the focus on that was on the other 14 vehicles. So this never really got discussed. But uh, as part of this, we would have to put uh, some money down for the upfitting, for the dump body, the plow and things like that the spreader, um, so we have some money to put that, that we'd have to put down up front, uh, totals of, of about $26,000. And then our monthly lease payment is $1,138 a month, totaling $13,656. Finance guy. Get back to you on, when, on Tuesday next week after I look through it. It, because it, the, uh, I'm sure we don't have twenty six thousand dollars sitting that we can pull from at this particular time. Okay, so we'll talk. Can I give us a chance to run through it and talk to you on, on Tuesday at the work session. Okay, it's not a no. It's just that I, we don't know. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay. And this unit here is too large to be able to be leased from Enterprise. They don't lease things this large. Correct. No, no, this is going through enterprise. It says equity leasing. Uh, yes, this is enterprise lease. It's oh, the there sweepers it is. Okay. that we're not. Uh, oh, this sweepers. is actually the biggest that enterprise goes okay. through. Okay, all right. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, sure. I'm sorry, I have a question. This was or was not included in the packet that we saw last month. Well, the packet, the, the spreadsheet that you saw actually had two tabs. This was a second tab that really wasn't discussed. Um, this is a purchase for this year, not next year. So okay. the, what was discussed last month was actually for 2022, ordering for 2022 vehicles. This would be something that we need right away okay. this year. I do remember seeing the Ford F-150s on that list. Yeah, the F-150 is different. This is a 550. Yep. Do you have any money sitting in, in the uh, public works? You could allocate, Barb. Um, so I've gone through um, the revenues and expenses for year to date through July 31st. Um, while we do have some revenues that are trailing behind budget, we do have some expense line items that are, you know, way under budget. And um, right now we did sell some various, you know, vehicles and other equipment on he bid. Um, that amount was 16,275. So that's money that has come in that, you know, hasn't been allocated to buy any items. 
And then we also have some savings within the snow and ice line item, as well as the public work summer employees that were not hired and the assistant public work uh, director salary. So there is some savings there within some line items. So there is, there is movement inside the public works division. Correct. Okay, I still like to wait till Tuesday till we can go through them to, uh, to run, run a tighter number on it, okay? Okay. Thank you. Is that okay with you, Lisa? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, me too. Uh, so we'll take this up next Tuesday at the uh, session. Um, thank you, Barb. Thank you, Mr. Flynn, for your potential expertise as always. Mr. Brayson, uh, can I ask a question? Will we have those line items for next to review before next Tuesday? So Ms. Lenati just mentioned sixteen thousand dollars from um, the sale of some items and then some other savings or, or expenses that are under budget. Will we have those numbers to review? Yes. Before Tuesday. Yeah. Thank what, you. Barbara and I and Mr. Perone and Mr. Metric will go through that next couple of days and have it so present it to the council on Tuesday. That's why I want to make sure that each line item has the sufficient amount of money that needs to be there. It would be helpful to have it before Tuesday, right? So we come in informed if we can. Sure. I would never say no. <laughs> um, any comments or questions from people attending the meeting on this issue? Okay. Item number six, approve the sale of the Ford Explorer used as a police training vehicle on Municipid. Municipid is where we get rid of our old stuff. And um, so this is something we do on a fairly regular basis. Um, basically straightforward. People put it on me just a bit and people vie for it. Yeah, as Ms. Liani just said, we by selling some of our old equipment, uh, she, we have sixteen thousand dollars uh, to put towards the five fifty. And this this vehicle here, I don't know what it'll bring, but that could go into the next kitty. Um, any comment or questions, Ms. Dorsey? Just an educational question. So something from the police department would go into public works? The sale of a police vehicle? I, um, Mr. Perona, I believe it would go into the general fund area. But Mr. Perona will answer that. Yeah, and this is, this is one of the problems with segregating out one department against another department, another department. There's an overall budget for the entire borough. There's general fund money in it. I just, you know, caution council from looking at things from just from department to department. I think you have to take a, a bigger look at the entire picture. Because even though public works would say has some line items that aren't uh, exceeding the expense lines, there may be other departments that are, you know, way over the top. So you, you have to look at the, the, the big picture first, I think. Okay. We can make that a 3 to sell the, uh, the Ford. Um, item number seven, consider awarding bid for site work and stormwater management facilities for Everhart Park improvement project. This is a biggie. Hey. Hello, Keith Karowski, Director of Westchester Parks and Recreation. Uh, this bid came back to us on Friday um, with three bids. Uh, there was a pre-mandatory bid meeting the, the week prior, so there was only five companies in attendance, so only five companies could bid on the project. We had uh, three come back. Bill, you can scroll down, please, to where the base bids are uh, calculated, which is right, nope, up a little bit, right there. Uh, Lechmanic Inc. came in as the low bid at 183,771. Um, they were the low bid. Um, the ad alternates were four other items that we had listed that would maybe be able to be done by our public works department. If not, you know, if they weren't extremely busy, and they obviously are. So the whole bid for this project, including the alternates, is, can you scroll down a little bit, Bill? Uh, 1000 or excuse me, $184,871 as the low bid. And we're looking for approval to move forward with that low bid. Uh, and I'm just talking about the bid for the site work and the uh, stormwater management aspects as of right now. And I'll get into the other aspects that were discussed earlier just after. What's the, uh, what's the time frame for this? We are looking to start. If uh, we get approvals from uh, both the committee and council, we can put a shovel on the ground on the 23rd of August. 
and we're looking at about a two and a half month window for the actual construction and installation of the product with a, uh, a substantial completion date right around uh, Halloween. Uh, if Mother Nature's on our side, we might be fully done right around Halloween. Uh, we are a little behind schedule. Uh, it's been a very intricate and detailed process and project. Uh, but when it's all said and done, it's going to be a uh, pretty much a beacon of Westchester. Uh, Everhart Park is one of ours, if not the top use park in the borough of Westchester. Uh, the Turks Head Music Festival, May Day, Theater in the Park, the various classes and camps, uh, movie nights, the numerous park rentals. Um, it is by far and away the most used park in the in the borough of Westchester. And this project is two years in the making uh, with significant help and assistance from the Friends of Everhart Park, our subcommittee that have been working on the grants, um, and in many, many sleepless nights. And again, this is just the approval on the, uh, the, the bids that came in as per the site work and prep uh, in regards to the uh, stormwater management as well. So I just have a question. This, this is a budgeted item or it is not a budgeted item? This is, well, this is budgeted as part of the entire project. It came in over the, our estimated um, budget, which was 150 k uh, That can partially be blamed maybe in an underestimation of the products and services required for the stormwater aspect of it. Also, it could be part of the COVID um, relation to the, um, uh, the chain of things happening and the cost of everything being twice as expensive. If we do this project in two years, non-COVID, maybe it's significantly less. Or if we did it three years ago, maybe it's less. Uh, but that's where we are right now. Yeah, uh, Mr. Kurowski, can you go through the, uh, you're asking for an, uh, an additional 200,000, is that what it is? It's uh, for, the, um, for the overall project, uh, based on the American Rescue Plan Act monies that are coming in, uh, still somewhat new to the borough, but we know that we can use these funds. Um, one of the key aspects of the money that we can use these funds for is to make necessary water, sewer, storm water, and broadband infrastructure investments. Obviously, our parks are some of our biggest infrastructures that we have here in the borough of Westchester, Everhart Park being the second largest park within the borough. Um, with that, an aspect or in correlation to that, uh, Everhart Project complies with the A. ARPA on a couple of different levels. Uh, one, it's a pay, it's a pay go funded infrastructure project, which basically means that the practice of funneling capital projects with cash on hand from taxes, fees, grants, and other sources, rather than borrowed sums, which the borough of Westchester normally does. Uh, we approximately uh, take care of two thirds of our capital expenditures in this process with monies that are on hand. Obviously the other third is if we can coming from grants, which We've collected $438,000 from three different granting bodies for this project. Another aspect um, that we can use this money for, obviously COVID related, anyone who's been to the park in the last year and a half or any of our parks, they have been used more than I've ever seen in my 17 years here. And with Everhart being kind of the top of that usage uh, um, frame, if you will, uh, and all the other projects and programs and events that take place at that park, uh, this is an ideal place to invest that money. Um, and third, um, the stormwater management aspect of it. A lot of what you don't see, which will be under the ground uh, that has been designed by our engineers, is stormwater management or stream protection fee issues that hopefully we can use some of those funds potentially or the, excuse me, the ARPA funds for, which they go right in line with. Okay, so the follow-up on my, my question. Sure. The, uh, when, we, when we started this journey, to your 2019 October of 2019 I believe October uh, to November of 2019 council uh, budgeted $130,000 of our funds yes of our funds correct so fast forward to 2021 after you know pandemic and everything else what's this entire project as it sits now uh, going to cost to complete our project complete, uh, everything done, uh, $683,833 with $438,000 that coming through grants and another $10,000 invested by the Friends of Everhart Park. Okay, and does that include the $130,000 we have the borough has put in the kitty? Uh, no, the, the in initial investment by the borough was never to use capital funds and or taxpayer dollars for the 01 fund. So we've raised all the monies we've come. We've not received all the funds we've expected via the grants we've applied for. Um, we have, in some aspects, dialed back portions of the project, 
uh, but these are the funds that we have to work with, whether it be the recreation fee in lieu of, stormwater management, or now the uh, ARPA funds along with the granting dollars. Thank you. Um, any questions or comments from people attending the meeting? Uh, Dale, come on up. Before we do that, I, I'm still not clear. This 183 is coming from the American Rescue Fund Act, or it is not? Yes, it will. It will be using up to, up to 230 thousand of that 1 million and change, whatever that number was, in efforts to the stormwater management aspects and the site work development of the project. Okay, so this 183. Well, again, I shouldn't say it exactly. We can use portions, and this is where things get difficult. The different grants all have different. Hey, okay, on, Keith. Sometimes less is more. Gotcha. Understood. The, the bid, the bid for site work is what you're looking at here. 183. Right. With plus the extras of 1,100 dollars. That's for all the site work, stormwater management things that will be underground. The additional work as the actual purchase of the playground equipment, the installation, and so forth, which is another 440 thousand some dollars. Total project cost is over six hundred thousand dollars. We need to fill the gap two hundred and twenty. Two thirty, I believe it is. Two thirty, two hundred and thirty thousand dollars. That's that's what the ask is. Okay. But I'm gonna go back. So we're looking at this now. It's a hundred about a hundred and eighty five thousand dollars. You're asking for approval of this bid Correct. and using the American Rescue Fund Act to fund this expense. Correct. Because it falls under the stormwater management. Uh, yes. I, again, I don't. I don't want to be too complicated. But there are the grants all have different things that we can use their monies for. I, so yes, we can use a lot of the money from the American Rescue Act or Rescue Re American Rescue Plan to pay for this. We're also going to be using grant dollars to pay for this. Okay. Um. Any other comments? One up, Lily. Oh, I'm sorry, Dale. I'm sorry. Dale Friends, 511 West Minor Street, also a member of Friends of Earhart Park. Um, I feel like a little bit of an of a high level overview would be valuable. And I think Michael is probably the best person uh, to to explain that to because the the big number over six hundred thousand dollars is is not one that I'm familiar with. But um, but if we go back to 2019, the the borough um, allocated $130,000, you know, which was wonderful. Um, um, for Hart Park then hired a, a, um, a, a playground designer named Play by, by Design, that's a company name, who um, went through a uh, community uh, design process at Hillsdale School and um, found out from the kids what they want in the playground. And it, it was incorporated into the design. And so we then, a schematic, um, started writing grants. That is, the Friends of our Everhart Park did. And we our, our first grant was um, uh, $90,000 from Chester County. The second one was $175,000 from the state, from DCED. That's the Department of Community and Economic Development. The third one was DCNR, the Department of Conservation and Natural Resources, who are the, the most common park and playground funding entity. And then our own group contributed $10,000. And so all those contributions added up to 588,000. Now, somehow along the way, and, and it was really because of the pandemic, the 130 from the borough seemed to slide away like like the borough couldn't do it anymore or or yeah right or or it, it's like wait a minute wait a minute we have one hundred thirty thousand dollars from the borough it's 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 not like we have a deficit it's like the money disappeared so um and, and i'm sure it didn't and nobody's you know saying that but 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 there's got to be a that um, that we probably don't need to know all of but um but we certainly um, know $588,000 did not going to be handled. Now, the 183 is 
part of it. Um, from the numbers that we were working with on the assumptions for the over budget with our funding, but things have moved around so there is a problem. And um, hopefully it's not a problem, but the other funding sources and this, this will all straighten itself out. So um, if I've misstated anything, Michael, please say so. But um, uh, I, I, I think that we were working, um, uh, Keith became part of our, um, of our grant writing committees. We had a fabulous person from Westchester University who was a pro at writing grants and uh, all this came together. So now, want to see it slip away. <laughs> yeah, and I don't think I don't think anybody wants to see this project slip away. Um, the total cost, uh, and we can share these numbers with you, Dale. I thought uh, we had to had a few meetings with some of the friends of Everhart Park and tried to keep up everybody abreast of where the numbers were. The total cost, which includes you know the playground equipment, the material to install, which you know some of it's you know, is not custom made, but it's going to be. Uh, build in place. Uh, that's 438,000. The site works 184 now, and we have $60,000 in design work. So that, you know, my, my Sean's quick math is $683,833. Um, that's the total cost of the project. The, this, the, the 130 that the borough put in the budget for this year, um, we put that in there as money that you know, we could potentially dip into, but the project began, the the intent was for the borough not to spend any money, that the three different grants would be able to pay for themselves, and then $30,000 would be able to be used for upfront money, and then the borough would get reimbursed back. So ultimately, it wouldn't cost us the hundred and thirty. But that's kind of- I don't argue with that. Right. I don't think that's sequence. No. <laughs> I, think the, I think that, Explanation emerged as the as the borough budget became the promising outcomes of the grants. The, that I think we may have been a little over optimistic about the grants. We got most of what we asked for, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. um, and 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 it's you know, but we have a new funding source, so uh, the borough would be foolish to use one hundred and thirty thousand dollars out of the general fund. I, and you can have federal funds that come in that can be used yeah. for this type of work. That's what the ask is right. for. It's making jobs. Good. Anybody have any, any questions for me? <laughs> Thank, thanks, Dale. Uh, are there any other comments or questions on the Everhart prop project? I would support this. I support the bid for okay. 185. A, thank you. That would be a 3 0 for uh, item number seven. Item number eight uh, approve the 2021 meeting minutes. They seemed fine to me. 3 0. Uh, any other business? Just not an agenda item. All right. Thank you, everyone. We're adjourned.